Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. Sunscreen is by far one of the most important products in your skincare routine. But for people with medium to dark complexions, it can be the most difficult ones to find. On this episode of Sunscreen for Dark Skin, we are putting Cosrx Aloe Soothing Sun Cream SPF 50 Plus PA++ to the test to see if it's black girl approved. If you missed the last episode, it'll be linked in the cards above. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you get updated every time we put another SPF in the hot seat. Without further ado, let's get started. As I'm rating this SPF, I'm keeping 10 qualities in mind. At the end, I'm going to be rating this out of 10. A little bit about the brand. Cosrx is one of the most popular K-beauty brands to date as their products are available worldwide and they are at a pretty affordable price. For the most part, the majority of their products are cruelty-free as well as vegan since they do not ship to China. But there are certain products that they have on the roster that do contain honey as well as uh, snail mucin. So if you're looking for a vegan specifically, there's a tons of other ones to choose from that they do have on their website. They do ship globally, which is always is amazing and um, yeah they have a lot of different products out there so there's something for everyone so the product itself is branded as a physical and chemical SPF this is great because I do believe that a use of good physical and good uh, chemical SPFs gives you the most coverage in terms of protection. We've traditionally looked at physical SPFs to be one that reflect UV, light, UV rays so they completely block them out and chemical ones is being absorbed into the skin and distributed as heat as well as absorbed into the bloodstream. However, it actually doesn't work that way. Both chemical and physical SPFs are both absorbed into the skin, dispersed as light, they both reflect and they can also um, be absorbed into your bloodstream. So it's important to just use whatever sunscreen that you're going to actually wear on your face. This product both protects and moisturizes your skin. It's lightweight, it absorbs quickly without feeling greasy or leaving a white cast. It also retails for $16 Canadian and comes with 1.69 fluid ounces, AKA 50 milliliters. We'll go into the details a little bit later, but first let's start with the application. Thank you. 
packaging. So this product comes packaged in a very simple tube. I love simple packaging. Like there's a lot to be said about what goes into making avant-garde looking bottles, but honestly, user-friendly just means put it in a squeezy tube and I'd be just fine. I love how compact it is. I love the shape. I love the cap. It doesn't have any you know, drippings or any messiness in the cap as well as a little click lock to the cap as well. So no issues there. And when you're done with the product, you can actually cut it so that you can use your finger and scrape out whatever's inside. So you get every last drop for packaging. This definitely gets a point for me price and quantity. So as I said before, this product retails for $16 Canadian and comes with 50 milliliters, aka 1.69 fluid ounces. The way that I like to determine whether a product is worth the price is by looking at the daily cost average. This is basically how much product you're getting, how much you're using, and how, how long you'll be able to use it for. I use very simple math to find this out. I've talked about this in numerous videos. I do have a short that explains everything in detail, so I'll link it up above. I already did the math on my phone. This product will last you 42 days if you're applying it once a day. Now you can't just look at one SPF when you're looking at the price and whether it's worth for the quantity. You have to look at multiples. So once I do 10 videos, I will be posting an update video or a recap video where I line them all up to see which one is the better um, deal. Um, for now, we'll give this a point. Next, let's go into the ingredients. Now, this product has a small to medium ingredient list. The rule of thumb when it comes to product ingredient list is that the shorter the list, the better. And this is because it minimizes the amount of potentially irritating ingredients that you can be exposed to. Where this product is concerned, it has a small to medium size list. So I think it really holds true to that story. I was pleasantly surprised to see that it did not contain a lot of filler ingredients. Now it does have quite a few like fatty acids and a lot of dimethicone, silicones, moisturizing ingredients. A lot of them are water soluble, so they won't be clogging your pores. So that makes it suitable for people with oily skin. It is meant to be quite a moisturizing product. Um, so it does make sense that it has a lot of those ingredients in there. Um, it also has glycerin, aloe, which the product is advertised as being an aloe sunscreen. When you look at the ingredients, the aloe water, the aloe leaf water is pretty far down on the list. So um, I'm not quite sure how much aloe is in there. It doesn't really say the percentage, but that's something to be said. With that being said, there's a lot that goes into formulation, something that the average consumer, myself included, does not understand. So. Um, it could be having more aloe than it seems on the ingredient list. As for the active ingredients, so for sunscreen, it has octinoxate, which we talked about this a little bit before. This just basically means that it's non-reef safe, but according to the Paula Choice website, it is a good ingredient to protect your skin against UVB rays. So don't go into the beach with this, but it's fine to wear outside. This other one I'm gonna put on the screen, I'll list them all here. Something that starts with a B, which is a broad spectrum um, chemical filter that filters both UVA and UVB, so that's great. It has another one that starts with a B um, that is water soluble, it's UVB protection. It has a lot of UVB protection in here, which a lot of sunscreens do. Um, so that's really great. And it also does have titanium dioxide. So this is gonna give you both A and B protection, A for the aging, B for the burning, so pretty, pretty good in terms of um, its protection there. Now, PA++ means that it does provide 90% of UVA protection. This is protecting your skin against aging, free radicals, so on and so forth. And it does have an SPF rating of 50. So this is gonna be giving you 98% coverage in terms of UVB. So don't spend all day in the sun, but this is a really good, um, very high level of protection. PA++, I typically like to see four pluses, but three is fine. The ingredients themselves, I don't see anything that'll be severely irritating to your skin. I didn't experience any irritation, any clogging of my pores, any congestion or anything like that. Um, so based on the ingredients, I think it'd be great for people with acne prone skin, oily skin, as well as um, pretty sensitive skin as well. There's nothing in here that's really gonna irritate your skin. So that gets a point for me. Now we get into application. So this product does have a lightweight texture. I wouldn't say it's a water gel or cream texture or anything like that, but it is quite a light lotion, which I do enjoy. So applying this on your skin, I do find that because of the 
titanium dioxide, it does take a bit of time to blend out, but I am pleasantly surprised at how well it soaks into the skin. It feels amazing on the face and it really truly does absorb very nicely. I haven't had any issues with peeling of the product. I haven't had any issues of patchiness with this product at all. And I do really enjoy the way that this blends out into my neck and in my hair lines. This will get a point for me. For finish, this product does leave a light glow to the face when you first put it on, most likely because of all the fatty alcohols that are in there. But once it dries down, which takes around 15 to 20 minutes, it completely dries into this really nice skin-like texture. I don't believe it's completely mattifying, but because that's not the purpose of the product, but it does leave your skin looking fairly matte. Like there's no really shiny, greasy, um, baby oil, shea butter greasiness to your hands or your face. So I do think it finishes quite nicely. Now, if you are someone with combination dry, normal, or even dry skin, you may need to be applying a thick moisturizer underneath. But for somebody with oily skin or combination oily skin, I think this will be just fine to wear on its own. Because personally, my skin is a little bit on the combination oily side. As for the finish, I do like my moisturizers or my SPFs to be a little bit more um, moisturizing or the finish a little bit sheener on the face. So for finish, I'm going to give this a point eight. Reapplication. As I'm reapplying this on my bare skin, it doesn't even feel like I have anything like a base layer on. So there's no pilling. The product blends out very nicely. There's no weird mixing with the already dried product that's on my face. And it really does have a nice finish. When I was reapplying this with the sponge, I also found that it went in very nicely to my skin. Um, because it does have the titanium dioxide, I did find that it picked up a bit of my product a little bit more than other ones that I've tried has. But it's nothing too noticeable. And I didn't really feel the need to pat anything down because it does have that dry um, touch finish. So for reapplication, I do like this both under makeup as well as on top of makeup. This will be getting a point for me. White cast. As you guys can see in the video, I was very pleasantly surprised at the way that this finished down onto the skin. It left absolutely no cast. For a moment there, I really thought it was going to, but as it blended out into my skin, I'm very, very happy to report that there is no white cast here love this this is getting a point for me fragrance you guys know i'm not the biggest fan of fragrance i usually like fragrant free or very muted very minimal scents to my products this product actually does have fragrance listed as an ingredient and while unlike a lot of other products that have linalool oil and all these other ingredients citral and all these other things in it um fragrance itself is not stable in the sunlight so while it doesn't have those specifically the label fragrance can mean that it could have 10 fragrant ingredients, 100 fragrant ingredients, we actually have no idea. So I don't really know what's in here for the fragrance composition. Granted, it doesn't leave any stinging on my face. I haven't had any irritation around my eyes with this product and it's not overwhelming whatsoever. It has a light floral scent to it, which I don't mind. Um, but because it does have fragrance, I generally don't like fragrance in my SPFs because they're not stable in the sunlight. So this is not one to go out on the beach, but it's definitely fine for brunch. It's gonna be given a 0.6 for me. Flashback. Now I was of course a little bit concerned with it having physical blockers in here with the titanium dioxide. Those tend to leave a white cast as well as a sheen to your face when you do flash photography. But once again, happy to report that there is no flash back with this as well. So that is going to be getting a point for me. All in all, this product is going to be getting a 9.4 out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I loved filming it for you. Comment down below and let me know, have you tried this SPF before? Or what are some others that you would like me to try? I would love to hear your thoughts. Go ahead and click over here to see some of my previous videos. And as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I will see you, lovely ladies and gents, in my next video. Bye.